Good morning. We're glad you've joined us for worship today. Now that local weather's getting colder, we're collecting blankets, and we continue to collect non-perishable groceries for Camel House. The number of people needing help is going up. Our congregational Thanksgiving luncheon, to go this year, will be after worship on Sunday, November 22nd. Please contact the church office with your desired plate count. Sunday, November 22nd is also when we plan for worship to return to inside the sanctuary at 1030. Sunday services will continue to be posted on YouTube and Facebook for those who feel safer worshiping at home. Sunday school and Wednesday night Bible study will remain on Zoom for now. Zoom calls do not require internet. Folks can join from any telephone. 
If you're not doing these and would like to, contact the church office. Presbyterian Women's Evening Circle continues to meet on the third Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m. by Zoom. And the Morning Circle ladies meet on the second Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. We start as we have been with a prayer of invocation and confession and assurance as we ask for the Spirit's illumination. Friends, Psalm 103 tells us the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and full of kindness and steadfast love. As far as the east is from the west is how far the Lord removes us from our sins. Please pray with me now. Almighty Lord God, you've sent your Holy Spirit into our hearts and freed us from bondage to sin. We know that in spite of our shortcomings, you love us more than we can imagine. Our anxieties block us from seeking your presence. We slip into fear, forgetting that our security is in you. We focus on our well-being instead of caring for others as you've called us to. Christ, we ask for your forgiveness and mercy. We know we can rest in God's love and we know we can trust in God's grace and forgiveness. Shine within us, Almighty One, with the true light of your loving kindness. Remind us again that in Christ we are forgiven. Please give us the grace to dedicate our lives to your service so we and all people may live in the joy that comes from Jesus our Savior. Open the eyes of our hearts to follow the message of your word as we hear it read and proclaimed through Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 78, 1 through 7 says, My friends, I beg you to listen to my teaching and to pay attention to what I'm saying. I will give instruction in parables and wise sayings to explain mysteries from the past that are difficult to understand. These are things we have heard and learned from our ancestors, stories that were handed down to us, and we will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds and mighty miracles of the Lord. The Lord made an agreement with Jacob and gave laws to Jacob's descendants, the people of Israel. Our ancestors were commanded to teach God's law to their children, so each new generation would know the Lord's law even the children not yet born. And they in turn should teach their own children. In this way, each new generation should put their trust and hope in God, never forgetting what the Lord has done and always obedient to God's commands. This ends the reading from Psalm 78. Laura. Hear this reading from the fifth chapter of Amos. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you. For you are our rock and our redeemer still. Amen. Throughout the gospel narratives, Jesus often tells parables as illustrations of what the kingdom of heaven will look like. 
He knows that we will need God's values translated for us, presented through a human lens that we're capable of understanding. After all, that's why Jesus was here among us to begin with, to bridge that gap between the human and the divine and help us learn how to live righteously. This morning's gospel text comes from Matthew chapter 25. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. While they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're all familiar with the traditions and rituals surrounding weddings today. Weddings are probably more complicated now than they have ever been. They're expensive and extensively planned, taking months of preparation. People often travel long distances to attend the wedding of a loved one. We call it the big day and tell the bride and groom that it will be the most important day of their lives. It is an important day, but we've raised the stakes so high for this one moment that there are bound to be mishaps. We can imagine a wedding in our modern context, but this parable may be a little easier for us to understand if we know more about how weddings functioned in Jesus' time. John M. Buchanan explains, weddings in Jesus' day were every bit as emotionally freighted as ours today with the same potential for mishap. Guests assembled at the home of the bride and were entertained by her parents while waiting for the groom. When the bridegroom approached, the guests, including the bridesmaids, lighted torches and went out to greet him. In a festive procession, the entire party walked to the groom's home, where his parents were waiting for the ceremony and the extended banquet that would follow and continue for several days. Jesus, his mother, and his disciples were guests at such a wedding in Cana. We probably all have a story or two about a wedding we've gone to where things have gone awry. Maybe the best man misplaced the rings right before the ceremony, or the caterer didn't show up with the cake. I was once in a wedding where the couple had reserved an outdoor venue, and we had to find a new location for the reception less than 48 hours beforehand because of severe weather. It all worked out, as it usually does, and we celebrated the wonderful couple's union. But it sure was stressful. The problem in this parable is that the bridegroom is running late. The ten bridesmaids have gone to meet him, and some are better prepared than others. The five who have brought extra oil for their lamps are able to rest with all the others as they wait for the groom. When the groom is finally near, the other five realize their mistake. There's not enough oil for all ten, because five did not come prepared. They have to go in search of oil, and they end up missing their opportunity to enter the wedding banquet. Jesus says, Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. He warns us not to be like the ones rushing to gather supplies at the last minute. It's not simply a matter of who knows the groom and who doesn't. All of these women were bridesmaids and waited for the groom. It's about who stayed focused on the groom through careful preparation and discipline and who got distracted. In the end, the bridesmaids wanted in, but the groom said that he didn't recognize them. 
So we need to prepare ourselves, keep focused, and stay vigilant as we wait for Jesus. But what does that mean? Here's another parable of sorts that I've been thinking about this week. It was brought to my attention by a colleague in a Zoom meeting a few days ago. It's actually an allegory, which isn't exactly the same thing, but it's similar, and it goes like this. A man and his companion enter a room and see a banquet table overflowing with food. There are many people in the room moving about, but they're all starving and suffering greatly. Although they have plenty of food, they can only eat with the utensils they've been given, which are three feet long, much too long for them to feed themselves. There seems to be no way for each person to get the food from the table to his or her mouth with these utensils. The man's companion turns to him and says, this is hell. They go into a second room. This one is just like the first with the same long banquet table, the food, and the three foot long utensils. The difference in this room is that the people are all seated around the table and they're using the utensils to feed one another. Everyone is happy and well fed. The man's companion says, this is heaven. This isn't a parable that Jesus told, but it fits very well with the values Jesus teaches and how he instructs us to act. Not just after the resurrection, when we find ourselves in the kingdom of heaven, but also while we prepare for the Lord's day and Christ's return. Earlier, I read a passage from Amos in which God calls for justice to roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This powerful image might resonate with us right now, especially as a people collectively longing for justice and righteousness. It might surprise us to read that it's not a peaceful image, though. It comes out of God's rage at the brokenness of his people. The people are wishing for the day of the Lord, God's reckoning, but God tells them that it won't bring the relief they're looking for. It will be as if they've escaped a lion and come to find themselves face to face with a bear. The Lord brings justice and righteousness, but it isn't a painless process for us, and we haven't reached the finish line yet. We've been through a difficult year, to say the least. It has been painful for all of us, for many different reasons. We have probably all yearned for the definitive end to this period of turmoil and strife. The message of the parable, though, is that we don't know the day or the hour that Christ will return. We don't know when we will find the peace we're seeking or how it will manifest. We have to stay present to our current reality, stay alert, be prepared, and never take for granted the changing conditions around us. If we fall asleep and fail to fill our lamps, we might miss the very one we've been waiting for. We can't be like the bridesmaids who didn't prepare, who grew weary and wandered away when the bridegroom finally came. We are called to be like the five who filled their lamps with oil in anticipation of the one they knew was coming. They honored the bridegroom by thinking ahead and being proactive. We can do this too by seeking justice in the here and now and acting righteously each day that we live. The day of the Lord is coming, but we have responsibilities in the meantime. We can build the kingdom of heaven among our fellow people by acting out the values of heaven and serving one another. Remember that in the allegory of the long utensils, there is no difference between heaven and hell. All of the conditions were exactly the same. The only thing that changed was the attitude of the people. In hell, individualism prevailed, and it tore the people apart. In heaven, service toward one another allowed every person to thrive. This is how we seek justice now. No matter how divided we are, as Christians, it is our duty to serve our fellow people, to model that behavior in the world, and to work for the change that we want to see. The Lord's justice doesn't favor the selfish. We have to continue to fill our lamps with virtuous oil, love, kindness, generosity, concern for the sick, the poor, and the lonely. This is how we fulfill our duty 
to the one we wait for and bring about justice and righteousness in a broken world. When everyone is serving, we are all also being served. Amen. Thank you, Laura. Let us pray. Holy three in one God, we thank you for the gift of faith. And we thank you for the faith of regular people who in the midst of uncertainty live with quiet dignity. We thank you for people of authority who walk humbly with God, with childlike faith. We thank you for those with doubts who commit themselves to the small faith they do hold. And we thank you for people who through crisis discover that their faith is larger than they thought. We thank you for those among us who never seem to waver, but never try to shame others who are unsure of their faith. Lord God, we thank you most of all for your son Jesus and for the courage of his faith, which always worked in harmony with his love. Because of him, we know we have a place in your eternal glory. Holy Spirit of infinite wisdom, we ask that you help us not squander opportunities for increased faith. Holy Creator of everlasting love, we offer our lives to further the work of your kingdom. Give us courage to share with others the joy of serving you. Please help all of us and all people to grow into the kind of disciples you want us to be. Please send your regenerating breath to each of us and the people and issues we bring before you now. Lord, please heal this world of this horrible pandemic and from all the political turmoil that our nation is going through. Regenerate your people, loving God. Send the wind of your spirit and bring us into the faith that you alone can give. Help us to be led by the witness of those who've gone before us and help us be examples to the generations that will follow. Please fill us so full of your spirit that we cannot help but live joyfully because of all you've done for us. Hear us now as we pray as Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, now as we go about our lives and remain on this faith journey, our worship continues. We're sent into the world as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. We go forward with the full knowledge of God's love, the everlasting comfort of our salvation in Christ, and the constant presence of the Holy Spirit. Let us rejoice, thankfully, always. <laughs>